بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم أما بعد إمام محمد بن عبد الوهاب رحمه الله تعالى he said اعلم أرشادك الله لطاعته أن الحنيفية ملة إبراهيم إن تعبد الله وحده مخلص له الدين وبذلك أمر الله جميع الناس وخلقهم لها كما قال الله كما قال تعالى وما خلقت الجن والإنس إلا ليعبدون إمام محمد بن عبد الوهاب رحمه الله تعالى he said no that the religion and the way of the Prophet Ibrahim is to purely worship Allah alone, and this is the command from Allah to all of mankind. It is for this reason Allah created them, as he says, which means, and I have created not the jinn and the mankind, except that they should worship me. So the Imam, rahmatullah he began, he said, I'alam arshadaka Allah li ta'atihi. Uh, he said, and no, and then he made he made supplication, as is his asloob and is the asloob and the way of the salaf of this ummah. He said, no, and may Allah guide you to obedience to him. So he began with a very beautiful supplication to call the believers and the listeners to be guided and to pay attention to something which is very, very important. And that is pure Tawheed and Tawheed al-Uluhiyya. Pure Tawheed al-Uluhiyya. So he, he began by calling our attention to this and trying to get our attention and gain our attention, softening our hearts by supplicating for us to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for guidance, that Allah guides us to that which is obedience, obedience to him, subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he said that he, he began talking about the military Ibrahim, the religion of Ibrahim, alayhi salatu wasalam, and this is the religion of all the Anbiya, in fact, that they all called to Tawheed. And Allah mentions this in the Quran. Qala subhanahu wa ta'ala fi kitab al-kareem, walaqad khalaqna lin, uh, walaqad, وَلَقَدْ بَعَثْنَا فِي كُلِّ أُمَّةٍ رَسُولٍ إِنْ نِعْبُدُ اللَّهَ وَاجْتَنِبُوا تَعْقُودٍ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, And we sent to every nation a messenger to worship Allah alone and avoid those deities or those things which are worshipped besides Him. So Allah affirmed Tawheed that He sent the messengers for this purpose and their purpose is what? To worship Allah alone, to call the people to that. And what is also a part of that Tawheed and a part of that call and a part of that Dawil Allah, it is to avoid those things worship besides him, which tanibu ta'ut, and avoid the ta'ut and, and, and stay away and avoid and make bara, free yourself from those things which are worshiped besides Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And especially those things of wickedness that... Uh, cause people into the worst, to be in the worst state of, of affairs, like the shaitan, and worshiping men, and worshiping jinn, and worshiping statues, and worshiping inanimate objects. So all of it is shirk, regardless of whether you worship the prophets, alayhim afdal salatu wasalam, like Jesus, alayhi salatu wasalam, or that you worship the angels, like Jibreel, but they are not ta'ghut, they are not ta'ghut, but instead, they do not deserve to be worshipped. They do not share in divinity with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah is the only one worthy of worship. But those ta'gud are those things which are pleased with being worshipped. So if you have leaders or if you have people in position in this worldly life who are pleased with people bowing before them, pleased with people praising them to the extent of worship and loving them and making ta'deem of them to the extent of worship, then those people who are pleased with that, then they fit the ma'ana of ta'ud. They fit the meaning of ta'ud. And going back to the ayat that the, the shaykh mentioned where Allah says, 
I have not created mankind in jinn except for the purpose of worshiping me. That shows the purity of Tawheed. It shows sincerity in worship. And it shows and it gives us a divine purpose that the Muslim has this divine purpose. A Muslim should never, no matter how desperate, this is only a state of immense weakness and forgetfulness when a Muslim commits suicide or kills himself and despairs in totality uh, with their Lord subhanahu wa ta'ala because they have a divine purpose. Unlike those people who have no purpose, who don't know how to deal with life's difficulties. They're being bullied. They're being, they're suffering. They're going through pain and strife and struggle, but they have no way to deal with that pain because all of us deal with pain. All of us deal with struggle. All of us deal with problems. No one has it easy all the time. No one does, but we all have different levels of, of struggle and different levels of suffering. And the point being with that is the mu'min returns to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because they know that this is why they were created. They were created with these tests. And a part of that test is actualizing in re in haq and in, in tawheed and actualizing tawheed by worshiping Allah alone during all situations and all circumstances. And realizing that He is the creator of the heavens and earth, devoting all worship to Him in all of its various forms. And also knowing that he has divine names and attributes that we should supplicate to him by. And that we should not associate and make resemblance with his creation. And we should not negate those names and attributes. If Allah says he rose above his throne, we accept that he rose above his throne. But we don't know how. And we leave that affair to Allah, the kafia. We don't know. But we believe it. And we don't negate. We don't say No. Estoa means something else. It means estola. This is what the Asha'ira uh, say and other sects. So we don't negate like they do. We don't make nafi. We don't make ta'wil. We don't uh, make tashbi. And we don't make ta'til of these uh, sifat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But instead we, we realize that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the only one worthy of worship. He has divine names and attributes. And we worship him uh, by those divine names and attributes, and we believe in those divine names and attributes in reality as they are, and we don't know the kafiyah. We don't know the how. We leave that to Allah. Then the Imam said, then the Shaykh mentioned the last portion of this part of the treatise. He said, then he mentioned the, the meaning uh, of, of worshiping, uh, which is mentioned in the ayat, I have not created mankind in the jinn except for the purpose of worshiping me. So the Shaykh then explained that. He said, in the meaning of worship, or worshiping me, is to declare that I alone should be worshipped. Meaning Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone should be worshipped. And then he said, And the greatest thing that Allah has commanded us with is Tawheed, is to worship Him and Him alone. That's why the believer, yes, we hate the evil of killing. We hate the evil of, of, of all these other wicked sins and, and zina and adultery and, and, and drinking and taking drugs and the damage that drugs cause to human society and civilization and, and the progress of humanity and cultures. We hate all of those things. And all of those wicked sins and the, the taking of people's life like it's nothing. Like we see the epidemic that goes on in America of people taking one another's life without cause. Over shoes, over the wrong color, over this. We have an epidemic of policemen in, in, in America killing young black men. This is a plague. And we hate all of these things. We hate inju injustice. But what we det det uh, detest more than anything is shirk is worshiping other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and associating partners with Allah, saying Allah has a son or a daughter or a girlfriend or a wife 
or someone that he shares in div divinity with, subhanahu wa ta'ala. So he said that the greatest thing is Tawheed. That's the greatest thing Allah commanded us with in the Quran. And then he defined, he said, And it is singling out Allah alone for worship. And then he says, ashirk. And the greatest thing that Allah commanded uh, you to stay away from is shirk, polytheism. And then he said, and then he defined it. And it is uh, worshiping with him or other than him. Meaning worshiping someone or something with Allah, associating a partner with him, or worshiping something else in totality besides Allah. For example, people who worship Buddha, or people who worship the Gohanzin, or people who worship uh, Jinn, or people who worship uh, the angel Jibreel, or people who worship Jesus, alayhi salatu wasalam, or some people who worship Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam even. All of that is shirk, and it will not benefit you. And it is the greatest sin. And then the Sheikh mentioned the ayat where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Wa'budullaha wa la tushriku bi shayin. And worship Allah alone and do not associate partners with him. Here in this ayat, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala began, Wa'budullaha. He said, and worship Allah. So this is in the imperative form. This is a command. Worship Allah alone is what he said. Wa'budullaha. Worship Allah. And that's a command. And do not associate partners with him. So in the first part of the command, it's an affirmation. An affirmation of what? Of Tawheed, of worshiping Allah alone. And in the second part of the command, it is a prohibition of committing polytheism with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Meaning worshiping someone along with Allah or other than Allah. Associating partners with Allah. So there, there is, nef, there is ithbat, one nefi in that ayat. There's an affirmation and there's a negation. An affirmation of tawheed and a negation of shirk. And we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil and bless us with ikhlas, with thabat ala sunnah, wa sallallahu wa sallam, ala nabiyyina Muhammad, wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.